Hey everybody, this is Rob Gill with, uh, I'm sitting with Brian Yohanano to my right. What's up, Brian? What's up, brother? John Spring to my left. What's up, man? What's up, John? Lost my voice. I was at Tony Brian. Robbins this weekend for four days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, quick note, I did the same thing last year and I did about 28 hours. This year, I stayed 42 hours. To put that into comparison, Sean Callaghy, one of our not only drivers and we're students of his results formula, but, but friend did 64 hours this weekend and he is one out of 1.2 attorneys in the country that has had two of the last three years, top 100 verdict, jury verdicts of 27 and $33 million. Success leaves clues and he was there for 64 hours and there's no coincidence, all right? so so. I think for us, we're fortunate enough to do a lot of work with Sean, part of his mastery movement. Um, I'd like to turn to, to, to Brian first because I'm learning the three pillars of um, practice mastery, which is process mastery, influence mastery, and, and self mastery. And when I think of Brian, specifically process and self mastery, and we were just joking, we looked at his calendar, can you talk to the good folks on what you do every sure. day? Including the fact that you can do 60 pull-ups within five minutes, which is Wildly so so we, we like to start off our day with some pull-ups and push-ups and then some deep breathing and that's how you want to start your day. But aside from that, it's about maximizing your time. And how do you maximize your time? You want to fill out your calendar. And it's either email, text message, phone calls. It's, it's, it's how you get yourself set up so this way you can score, right? You want to be able to set up as many meetings as you want. You want to put people together and you want to make sure these people are getting set up in a way that's helpful to them. So you're leveraging other people. So if you could fill out your whole calendar, whether it's meetings, lunches, dinners, text message, email, it's getting it together and getting it done. So, so Brian, if you don't mind me asking a question because I, I, I have the good fortune of knowing you and, and I see your action loud and clear. Can you tell the good folks out there, do you time block this? Is this an all day affair? Do you, do you meet with somebody and right after do a text, an email, or a phone call for people you haven't seen? How do you process that stuff? Right. So it's obviously done differently, right? Because you want to be able to time block certain areas because you might not be able to time block it all the time. Every week it's different. You know, meetings might get set up and you might, they might cancel, you might have to push them. So things like that are definitely going to get mixed up. But then you have things that are spur of the moment. You know, you might have an hour free, you know, who's around? Let's just set something up. And then plus, you know, I, I like to set up things because you also work in the operating room. So I'm stopping in there, I'm bumping into people and I'm getting things set up that way as well. So it's, it's different. Everybody. Yeah, so Brian's wildly successful in what he does. And my question is here, we both have three kids. And when you're time blocking, does your wife call you and, or does other clients call you or do your kids call you and how do you work through those variations while you're doing your time block and staying on point, but yet being a kick-ass dad, husband, and father. Right, so on that part, uh, point, my wife, she jokes around. She might say, listen, you know what? You're not even included in my schedule. <laughs> but at the same time, you really are included in the schedule, you know? So on the weekends, I like to make sure I get my family time in as much as I can. I'll try to make it one day a week where it's a little bit shorter just to make sure I get my family time because you need balance as well. Sure. You, got, you want to have everything balanced. You know, you, it's about, you know, find your family, it's your career, it's your health, it's everything. You need the most balance you can get. So yeah. you try so, to prioritize. So, so let, me, let me turn it over to John. John Spring, I've been fortunate enough to know him since the late 90s. Uh, he's been wildly successful in different sectors of the financial planning industry, including having his own practice, uh, joining alliances with us. He's a CFP, a certified financial planner. His action is loud. His words are low. His follow-up is tremendous. And he, with me, began this process and this journey with Sean. And, and my question to you, John, I know that, I know that you know, we, we, we had a lot of late nights and our biggest thing in our joint work and what we do is we wanna make sure first and foremost that we have fun. Yeah. Can you touch on, on any of that stuff, including how you've taken tremendous notes, understanding process mastery, self-mastery, and influence mastery? Yeah, well, first of all, being exposed to Sean as soon as I started working with you was absolutely tremendous. I mean, the guy talked about every level of the process mastery, self-mastery, um, influence. and influence mastery. I mean, the guy is just phenomenal. And one of the biggest things right out of the gate we started doing was saying, what's our outcome? So me and Rob will be heading into a meeting at night. It's late. We just had a bunch of meetings all day. We say, all right, what are we looking to do? How many meetings are we going to get out of this? And we get ourselves psyched up. And then we proceed to go in and have a good time. I mean, we have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. 
And I think people feel that energy and they're drawn to us. I mean, we do go in, we usually exceed the amount of meetings we want to have. Um, and at the same time, we're having a good time. And I think that's very important. If you're not having a good time, I agree. it's yeah. going to be a struggle, it's going to be a grind. Yeah. If you go in there and get your goals achieved, but also have a good time doing it, life will be much better. So, so in getting to in me knowing John on as many different levels that I know him, it's very important for him to have fun. Now, when I say have fun, I don't want you to, to visualize like nothing's getting done. His, his form of fun is pattern interruption, which is a tremendous way to create rapport. And from there, he has a nickname that I've dubbed him in the late 90s, Social G, which is social genius, because at the end of the day, there's nobody more social and approachable than John Spring. And when I watch him work within these rooms, and, and Brian is constantly putting us out there, as well as Sean and what he does, it's amazing to see. Um, can you share a little bit about you know where where you were two years ago and where you are now? 